Okay, class, today we're in section 8.6, factor ax squared plus bx plus c. Factor ax squared plus bx plus c. Before, you factor trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Now you will factor trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Key vocabulary, trinomial. Key vocabulary, trinomial. Okay, today I'm going to give you a brief intro about what this lesson is about, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut method on how to factor these problems a lot quicker and with a lot less stress. Okay, now if you remember before in the previous lesson, you factored equations that did not have a value in front of the x squared, sometimes referred to as a. Now you have values in front of the x squared, so you got to factor here along with factoring the c term, which in this case is c. So you got to factor 2 and you got to factor 3. Now for, for a problem like this, it's not that big a deal, but you're going to see it takes a lot of work as the problems get more and more complicated. Now notice the difference between example 1 and example 2. 2. See how 2 is more, more factoring than in example 1? Okay, and we'll go ahead to example 3. Let you take a look at that. And do you see that there's more work in example 3? Look at all this work here. You got a factor, you got factors of 4. All right, and you got factors of uh, negative 7. Look at all the different possible factorizations or combinations you have to figure out, possible factorizations or combinations you have to figure out before you can determine the answer. Now this is assuming that you make no mistake when solving this problem. You can see right here that the correct answer is down here. But let's pretend you found the correct answer, but when you went to multiply the check to see if you're correct that you, that you made a mistake. That means that now you have to go back and start over again to find out where you made your error. The technique I'm going to show you is a lot shorter than working this particular technique here. Okay, now the first thing you want to do in all these examples is you want to make a blank box like you see right here. So you make a box, make sure it has four sections. All right, now after making a box, what you do is you take the first term, the 2x squared, and you place it in the portion right here, 2x squared. Then you take the last term and you put it there. You will always do this. First term here, last term there. The next step you're going to do is you're going to multiply. 2x squared times 3 is going to give you 6x squared. Okay, after you multiply 2x squared times 3, you get 6x squared. Now you write down all the factors for 6x squared. And that's going to be 6x and x, 3x, x 3x, and 2x. Okay, next, you look at your original problem, and you look at the middle number, which is a negative 7. And then you look at your uh, factors over here, and then you ask yourself, which one of these can get me to a negative 7 through addition? And you're going to find out it's going to be 6x and x. If I made this a negative 6, and I made that a negative x, negative 6x x plus a negative x, would give me a negative 7x, and at the same time, a negative 6x times a negative x would give me a positive 6x squared. So this is the one you want. Now that you determine that, then you would take each factor and place it in one of the boxes. It doesn't matter which factor you place in which box. In this case, I'm going to put the negative 6x here, and I'm going to put the negative x here. Now, after doing this, I got everything in the box the way I want to. 
Now I'm going to factor going down, down, across, across. And when I factor, I'm trying to find the greatest common factor amongst each term. So here I got 2x squared and a negative 6x. What's the greatest factor between 2 and 6? That's going to be 2. What's the greatest common factor between x squared and x? That's going to be x. What's the greatest common factor between a negative 1x and 3? They have nothing in common other than 1. Now I go horizontal. What's the greatest common factor between 2x squared and a negative x? The only thing they have in common is x. Now I'll go here. What's the greatest common factor between a negative 6x and 3? And that's going to be 3. Okay, now I can write my factors. x and 3. x, 3. 2x and 1 x and 3, 2x and 1. Now all I have to do is determine my signs to make sure my signs are correct. Now I can determine my signs from, from my original setup. I remember that I had a negative and a negative. So here I'm going to put in negative and a negative. Now I can analyze the two binomials just to be sure I'm correct. For example, that 3 there is positive. A negative 3 times a negative 1, that would give me that positive 3. Also, I know that a negative 3 times 2x would give me a negative 6x. I also know that x times a negative 1 would give me a negative 1x. If I add those together, I would end up with a negative 7x. So that tells me that I got my middle term. And I got my last term. And then, of course, x times 2x gives me 2x squared. That means that I found my answer. Okay, now we're going to use uh, do example 2 using the same technique. But here we're going to factor when b is positive and c is negative. But it's going to be the same exact technique. Okay, I write my problem down. My first term, 3n squared, goes into this box. My last term, negative 5, goes into this box. I multiply 3n squared times negative 5, and that's going to give me, um, what is that, uh, a negative 15n squared. Now I write down my factors for 15, only worrying about a, a positive 15, not a negative 15, just do the positive, and I'll explain why later. So for 15, I got... 15 times 1, and I have 3 times 5. Okay, now I look at 15 and 1, I look at 3 and 5, and I ask myself, which one of these can get me to 14? By the way, that should be a 14 in. That should be a 14 in. Which one of these can get me to 14? Now, I think it's rather obvious it's going to be 15. So 15 has to be positive, and the 1 has to be negative. 15 minus 1 would give me a 14n. That would give me a 14n. All right, now here, now notice, a positive 15 times a negative 1 would give me a negative 15. Now remember, even though I just wrote 15 here and a negative 1, this is really 15n and a negative 1n. So I put it in just like that. 15n and a negative 1n. Now, once again, the reason for that is because 15n times a negative 1n would give you a negative 15n squared. Okay? And then 15n minus 1n would give you a positive 14n. Okay, now that we have our square set up, now we're ready to factor. What's the greatest common factor between 3 and 15? That's going to be 3. The greatest common factor between n squared and n, that's going to be n. The greatest common factor between a negative 1n and a negative 5, that's going to be just negative 1. All right, now I'm going to squeeze this here in green. 
What's the greatest common factor between 3n squared and a negative 1n? That's just going to be n. What's the greatest common factor between 15n and a negative 5? That's going to be 5. All right, and with that, we have our answer. 3n minus 1 times n plus 5. Okay, now example three is going to be done the exact same way, except that example three says factor when a is negative. So here we got a negative 4x squared plus 12x plus 7. Well, that a is negative. We don't want the a to be negative. So we're going to factor out a negative from the entire trinomial. So step one, factor a negative one from each term of the trinomial. To do that, we write the trinomial. We put the negative on the outside, and then everything that's part of the trinomial becomes its opposite. So the negative 4x squared becomes a positive 4x squared. The positive 12x becomes a negative 12x. And the positive 7 becomes a negative 7. So if we will multiply through back by negative 1, we will come out with the same answer. So what we did here was we factored out. Okay, now remember, we had to factor that negative out so everything here is this opposite from the original problem. So my first term is going to be 4x squared, not negative 4x squared, but 4x squared. And my last term is going to be negative 7, not positive 7. It's the negative 7 that we did here when we factored out. Okay, so now I multiply 4x squared times a negative 7. And I get a negative 28 x squared. Then I write down all my factors for 28, not worrying about the negative yet. That'll come out real simple. So I'm not worried about the negative yet, just all my factors for 28. All right, so now when I write all my factors for 28, I should have 28 and 1, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. Now I look at my factors and I ask myself, which one of these can get me to a negative 12? Which one of these can get me to a negative 12 by addition or subtraction. And I can easily see it's going to be 2 and 14. 14 minus 2 is 12. However, I need for it to be negative. So therefore, the 2 has to be positive, And the 14 has to be negative. OK, once again, I'm going to double check my math. 2 times a negative 14 is a negative 28. Now remember, this is really 2x times a negative 14x. So that's really a negative 28x squared. And we just showed you a negative 14x plus a positive 2x would give me a negative 12x. Okay, now 4x squared and 2x squared. Excuse me, I'm skipping one step. So here I put my 2x in, and here I put in my negative 14x. And once again, it doesn't matter where you place each one of these. In other words, the negative 14 that's going to be here and the 2s can be there. It does not matter, but you still factor going down. So let's factor. What's the greatest common factor between 4 and 2? Two? 2. Greatest common factor between x squared and x? x. Greatest common factor between a negative 14x and a negative 7? That's going to be a negative 7. Greatest common factor between 4 and 14? That's going to be 2. Greatest common factor between x squared and x, that's going to be x. Greatest common factor between 2x and a negative 7, that's going to be 1. All right, so now all we got to do is just write out our factors, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. And then 2x minus 7, that's going to be 2x minus 7. And don't forget, we must bring down that negative. That negative still stays on the outside. Now let's double check the math on this one just to be sure we got it down. 2x times 2x is equal to 4x squared. 2x times 1 is equal to a negative 14x. 1 times 2x is equal to a positive 2x. We combine those, we come out with a negative 12x. A positive 1 times a negative 7 will give us a negative 7. So then we know that our answer is complete with a lot less work. Okay, now real quick, for those who may be confused on the variables, x squared is equal to x times x. X is X. How many X's do they have in common? Just one. 
So the greatest common factor is X. Here I got an X cubed and an X squared. 